Hi there, PsychoCamp here. I uh, put up a video a, a few months ago about building an octopus base, uh, the equivalent of an octopus. Uh, MFJ calls it the octopus, Chameleon calls it the spider, and basically it's a four-band uh, antenna, dipole antenna, that's made with uh, hamsticks. You use a pair of hamsticks for each band. And uh, I got some questions. Uh, people were asking for a little bit more detail on the uh, parts. So I decided to put this video together to talk about the parts. Okay, so first let's talk about the, the uh, base of the whole thing, which is the actual box itself. So I got the eight-sided box from DigiKey, D-I-G-I-K-E-Y, uh, and uh, that's what started this whole thing off. It's a Hammond box, and uh, it's pretty easy to drill. It's all aluminum. It does not have a... Uh, does not have a seal where the top bolts on but you could easily put uh, silicon on it and you know to make it more waterproof if you wanted to since I only use this for portable activations I didn't worry about that so that's basically the start of this whole thing is the box all right now let's move along to the components that allow you to mount the hamsticks uh, these are 3 8 by 24 components uh, uh, so everything is going to be 3 8 in diameter pretty much and uh, and uh, where it's shredded it's a number 24 thread so the first thing we have is some lock washers and these help to keep when you're putting the antennas in and out it helps to, to keep the little assembly from spinning around too much so uh, those lock washers were bought from Amazon and here's some information about where the lock washers came from uh, next were the couplers. The couplers are the funny ones. They're the they're the longer. They look like nuts, but they're really long, and uh, they allow you to uh, make the connection between the actual bolt that's inside the box and the hamstick, which is on the outside world. And again, those were built. Those were bought from uh, Amazon, and uh, and here's the uh, page. It shows the information about uh, those. Uh, you need a bunch of flat washers uh, to uh, connect things to and to give the uh, lock washer something to bite into so you don't damage the nylon and we'll get into that when we talk about the detailed uh, construction of each of the two kinds of connector the grounded connectors and the driven connectors and those again those came from uh, our friend uh, friends at Amazon and finally let's talk about the the most important one which is the the stud it's called a stud mount washer and basically what it is it's a washer with a lip that goes into the hole you drill into the box and keeps anything from touching the hole you drilled through the box. So these are the isolating washers. I use one on either side of the box wall. Uh, the, uh, those are the ones that keep your driven elements from grounding out. And uh, those again came from Amazon. Uh, it was hard to find them because it's hard to describe them. But luckily Workman makes a replacement set and here's a description of those as well. Now, finally, we have the bolts, and uh, unfortunately, I just went to my local hardware store and got the bolts. Uh, these are stainless steel bolts. One of them, there's two kinds. There's a, there's a one and a half inch bolt, and there is a one, uh, I'm sorry, there's a, it's either five eighths or one inch. I think one inch will do. Uh, one inch bolt, or, or was it one and a quarter? Wait a minute, I'm going to have to measure this. So let me just bear with me here while I stick... Uh, yeah, it's one and an eighth. I'm sorry. So it's one and an eighth inch stainless steel bolts, and you use the longer one for the ones with the uh, the uh, fiber washers in them because they take up a lot of real estate. They're they're fairly thick, and that's basically all the components you need to build one of the either grounded elements or a connector for a grounded element or a connector for a driven element, which we'll talk about next. Okay, I did, I'm sorry, I left out one component, and that is on each of the bolts, uh, when you do the wired side, the driven side, you need a uh, connector to connect the wiring up. And what I used was ring connectors. They are 12-10 AWG, uh, you know, wire, wire gauge, 3 8 inch holes connectors. I got them th from a little specialty shop kind of like the local radio shack it's called cables and connectors but that's what you want to use and the reason I used round ones was so that they would lay flat against the washers I didn't want to take the the, the uh, 
I didn't want to use spades or any of that kind of stuff. I thought I'd use a natural round connector. I thought it would give me a better connector and all that. So uh, I kind of, I'm kind of previewing what's coming next in the video, but I did want to let you know about that one other connector. Okay, so now we're going to go through the detail of assembling each of the two different kinds of connectors. And we're going to start with the grounded connector. So, so th this is the way you build the grounded connector in the box and here's a picture of the of the uh, completed box from my last video okay now I'm gonna switch to the to my my desktop camera here and I'll show you exactly how you put one of these together with with the exception of the uh, well I'm, I'm sorry these are the grounded connectors the grounded connectors do not use the wire obviously because they're grounded to the to the case so let's take a look at, at how those are put together I will say one thing you have to be careful of is between the grounded connectors and the driven connectors the hole sizes are different and we'll talk about that in a minute you can use a 3 8 inch hole that you can get the bolt through for the ones that are that are grounded and in fact it makes a tighter connection so it's a good thing to do that but when you go to put the bolts in for the driven connection the holes have to be slightly bigger and I'll show you why when we get there Okay, so we're going to go from the inside of the box to the outside of the box. So this is the inside, starts on the inside, this is what goes on the outside. This big gap in between here, this is the wall of the box. So this is the box itself, this big gap here. So, you start with your bolt, you thread on your electrical connector, your, your, uh, your, your 12, 10, uh, 3 8 round electrical connector, your round, you, you, and I actually built mine and put you know crypto wires in ahead of time and all of that so I did that first okay then you add a lock washer to lock everything in place and then you add a flat washer and the flat washer does two things first of all it keeps the lock washer from digging up the aluminum uh, case uh, you know the aluminum box and second thing is it spreads the load it spreads the load against the wall of the box so that's real good you would take this whole thing and you would slip it through the side of the box. So now you've got this sticking out of the box. You add another load load spreading washer and protecting it from the lock washer. You add another lock washer and you put on the coupler. And the important thing with this is when you get this in, you'll notice this is all squirrely and janky here. You know, it's not flat. You got to tighten it down until these two lock washers compress all the way down and then everything is nice and even, nice and parallel. So be careful when you when you build this. You know, use a use a uh, socket, uh, a box ended wrench on this side, and an, I use a box ended wrench on this side and an open wrench on this side to get them really tight, and that worked great. So that's basically how you do the uh, grounded end type connector of the box. So now we're going to talk about what I like to call the driven side of the box. So the the driven side of the box is where you have to insulate the uh, the uh, connector from the box itself because the box represents ground and you don't want the your driven elements that you're trying to put power through this is where the inside lead of the coax goes all of these guys the, these four are where the inside lead of the coax goes the other four is where the shield goes okay now as I said before you will have to remember to drill a slightly larger hole let's take a look at the components that are involved in building this uh, and then uh, I'll show you why. So here are all the components except the wire lead and, uh, and please ignore what I said in the previous, previous segments. The grounded elements do not require wire leads, only the driven elements. So I built the, I, I built the wire leads ahead of time. You can see them in the, the previous pictures. Uh, you know, they have the yellow, uh, the yellow uh, cuff on them and the red wire. So those are the those are those leads. But when you're building this assembly, you'll notice there's a lot more parts. And the big guy here is these these washers, and they have these little lips on them. You, you notice the little lip? Well, that lip goes into the hole where you uh, that you drilled in the side of the box. And the problem is the hole in the middle of this is three eighths, but you need room for the lip to go inside the hole of the box. So you have to drill the thing 
a little bit bigger, not quite an eighth of an inch, but a little bit bigger. Try not to drill it too much bigger or, or the stuff will move around. You don't want it to do that. But uh, that's the reason you needed to do it. Now, in a lot of these, I've seen people use one of these and then they, they put it in the box and they op on, on the opposite side, they use just a flat nylon washer. And that's fine unless the thing kinks. If it kinks, it shorts out. So you don't want that. So I use two of them. I know it's not as mechanically uh, a good idea to use two pieces of nylon in here, but I use two of them facing each other, and those both of those edges uh, insulate the bolt that's going through them from touching the box. So pretty straightforward. You've got your, your slightly longer bolt because you've got more components. Again, you put your driven lead on there. You throw on a lock washer to try to help keep everything steady. You're still, I'm still using the uh, the uh, flat washer. In this case, I'm protecting the fiber, the nylon washer, from getting chewed up by the the lock washer. So you you have one of these. You're going to put this again. You're going to put this in the side of your box, and you're going to be very careful to ensure that this lip drops into the hole that you're not off center that it's right inside the hole then you're going to put in a facing one from the other so now you've got this is what's sticking out of the box at this point you stick another one of these in you throw another protective washer on it and you throw your uh, your lock washer on and again with your coupler now you still have the same point the same point that we made on the last one see everything's all jinky and screwed up because of the way the lock washers are made. So again, you're grabbing them with a, a box end wrench, open end wrench, and you're tightening those down until these are perfectly flat. When you get done putting these on, make sure you take a voltmeter and check every single one of them and make sure it is not grounded to the box. So take any, any uh, on any of these metallic pieces, just check them with a continuity tester, a volt meter, and make sure that none of these are grounded to the box. Because if they are, you've just created a short circuit and your radio is not going to like that very much. So that's basically how you build the, uh, the driven element of the box. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the actual uh, final uh, box itself, and that's how you get it mounted on the pole. I apologize that I don't have parts to show you for this, but basically... The, the, what, what my theory on this was, was I was going to use a short L bracket with one U clamp and I was going to put the pole right up against the box uh, because I have a fairly, uh, fairly large round pole, it's one of those military surplus fiberglass mass extensions. And uh, so basically what I did was I found the center of the box and on my particular uh, angle bracket is it just happens to be that if you put a bolt through the center of the holes in it the outside edge is the same distance as half the mast so the mast is right up against it and you clamp it in with the u-clamp so you can see the the little layout that i put on there and i use two self-tapping uh sheet metal screws pretty good size one uh they're not three eighths but they're pretty close to it so three eighths is six sixteenths they're probably five sixteenths uh, self-tapping uh, uh, screws and then so so that mounts flat the other end of the angle iron sticks upwards from the box and uh, that's where you put the uh, the uh, u-clamp through and mine only uses a single u-clamp again mine uses the mine pushes the pole right against the top and that makes it flat and also gives it a little bit of uh, rigidity and the one U-clamp seems to work pretty good. This is not a permanent installation. This is something I run off the back of my car when I'm doing uh, you know, parts of the air or I'm doing portable, I'm doing portable things. And that's basically the, the rest of the detail of the, uh, of the uh, antenna. Um, I, I use four pairs of antennas. I have 10 currently 17, which I probably should have got 15 because I didn't realize 17 is not a contesting uh, band. But I've got 10, 17, 20, and 40. The last thing I'll say about this whole thing was I did have some trouble getting the uh, SWR on 20 and 40 right, and it was because I was only putting the antenna 18 feet in the air. 
and it's too low. So the feed point impedance was actually low. So what I did to solve that was I said, hey, when you offset, when you off center feed a dipole, the uh, input impedance at the feed point goes up. So I just offset the uh, the hamsticks. So uh, I started going, uh, I think, two or three inches at a time, and I would shorten one and lengthen the other until it was until I brought the input impedance down to about 1.4, 1.5 to one, and I said that's plenty. So uh, I did that on uh, uh, 20 and 40. I also put a set of, uh, of 75 meters on it just for fun. Did the same thing. It actually worked pretty well. I was pretty impressed. So that's all the information I have for you. I hope this helps. Uh, go back and watch the original, uh, the original video of building the box if you, uh, you want to see anything that I have left out or forgotten to, to re-mention in this video. And I hope you have a great day and enjoy hamming it up out there.